Dorothy, darling. Well, we are spending our first day off duty today and I'm taking the opportunity to write a few lines. We have been working a lot of overtime the last few days. In fact, it has been almost midnight by the time we get to bed. Anyway, I hope our efforts will help to end this war quicker. This is a letter that my grandfather wrote to my grandma during the Second World War. His name was Arthur Denham Milligan, and in 1941 he enlisted in the Royal Australian Air Force. He was sent to New Guinea, where he did mechanical work on the planes which were used to drive back Japanese forces. He was 23 years old, and it was his first trip overseas. There are many, many stories like my grandfather's, of young Australians who went off to fight for their country, often knowing little about where they were going and what they'd find when they got there. Some didn't come back. And every year in November, we remember them. Remembrance Day is when we think about all of the Australian men and women who've been involved in all the wars and peacekeeping missions that Australia's been involved in, from the Boer War and the First and Second World Wars to Vietnam, East Timor and Afghanistan. The date marks the end of the First World War a devastating global conflict that cost around 40 million lives. Its beginnings were complicated. At the start of last century, European countries had built up a series of alliances with each other. These ones were all on one side, these ones were on the other. So when the Austro-Hungarian Empire declared war on Serbia in 1914, the country's allies came to help, and a small war became a world war. Back then, Australia was still a member of the British Empire, and many young Aussies were keen to sign up and serve their king and country. Many battles were fought in trenches. It was gruelling and deadly. But by 1918, Australia's allies had begun to get the upper hand. On the 11th of November, 1918, the leaders of the European countries came together and signed an armistice, an agreement to end the fighting. By 11 o'clock, the war was over. That day was known as Armistice Day, and it was celebrated every year in the countries which helped to win the war. Later, it became known as Remembrance Day. More than 60,000 Australians were killed in the First World War. In a country with a population of less than five million, that was devastating. In fact, the First World War was so terrible that many around the world thought it could never happen again. That's why they called it the Great War, the war to end all wars. But it wasn't. Just two decades later, the world was at war again. This time against Nazi Germany and its allies. Australia found itself fighting not just for its allies, but to defend its own borders. And when peace came at last, we again promised never to forget. Today, Remembrance Day is a time to honour all of those who've served. The people that we know, and the people that we've never met. It's a time to celebrate peace and honour courage and to think about the ordinary Australians who lived through extraordinary times.